Hi everyone! Today I wanted to talk about one of the more powerful features of Django, using third-party apps. While it's vital to know how to make an app to really use Django, you don't want to write everything by hand. There's no point to reinventing the wheel if you don't have to. The first step to finding an app is to find one that fits your needs. There's a few things you should consider when assessing a new app. First, is it being updated? Second, how many maintainers does it have? And third, does it actually do what you need it to do? So on GitHub, which is where you're likely to find the app, check the following. Has it been updated recently? Is the last update within the past few months, or has it not been touched in years? Look at who the contributors are as well. Are there a lot of them? Or is it one lone developer who may get hit by a truck one day, leaving the project without anyone keeping it up? Finally, does it do what you need to do? Take a hard look at the docs and check out how the app works. What sort of models does it add? What functionality does it bring? Be realistic with this step because it can be easy to talk yourself into an app because it's popular when it doesn't really solve your problem. Let's say you found an app you like. I'm going to show off Django Grappelli because it's a pretty simple app that can improve nearly any project. Django Grappelli gives your admin interface a nice tune-up, making it more attractive and easier to use. Step 1 is reading the instructions. Some apps require very little to get up and running, and some require some special steps. Grappelli has a few of those. In general, you'll need to pip install something into your virtual env. Make sure your virtual env is up, and do pip install whatever it says in the docs. If everything goes well, pip will let you know. Next, you need to tell Django to actually use this new app. In your settings file, add the name of the app under Installed Apps. Use the name in the third-party app docs since that, since that often differs from the package name you used with pip. Note that some apps will ask you to put their app before or after a certain app. With Django Capelli, it needs to be before Django Contrib Admin. At this point, we need to go back to the docs to see if there's anything else we need to do. Sometimes this is enough, but other times there are additional settings. For Django Grappelli, we have to add a line to urls.py and a line to template loaders. We also have to collect static. I didn't actually set up our static folder, which is where we store all of our CSS and JavaScript, so I'll set that up now. All I have to do is tell Django where to store and find all of my static assets. Note that this looks a lot like the line of code that tells Django where to upload files, so I'm just copying and pasting it and making a few small changes. Now that I have my static folder set up, let's use the collect static command. Using manage.py, I run it, and Django goes out and finds all the static files that my app is using and puts them in a new folder. If I try to run the test server, I get an error about using include in urls.py. I fix that by importing include in the same line as I import urls, and then I run the server again, and it works. If I check out my site, the admin looks a lot nicer now. We're not done, though. If we want to be able to set up our project again reliably and deploy it to certain services, we need to make sure we add our new app to our requirements file. A requirements file is a simple text file that tells pip what needs to be installed for our project to be able to run. First, let's do a pip freeze to see what version was installed. There's a couple of things here, but remember, PIP will install all of the requirements for a package when installing it, so all we need to do are grab two of the lines, one for Django and the one for Grappelli. We then create a new file, requirements.txt. Into that file, we put our two packages, along with the versions. We can technically skip the versions, but I don't recommend it. It's easy to get burned when one of the packages you use updates, and that update breaks your project pin your versions. Of course, you shouldn't ignore what you have installed forever. Just be mindful when you update by double-checking all of your packages continue to play well together. So that's a brief overview of how to find and use third-party apps with Django. I only went over one, but for most apps, you'll be following the same steps. Make sure it's up to date and actively maintained. Make sure it fits your needs. Read the docs on how to install it. Use pip to install it. Add it to your installed apps in your settings file, and follow any additional setup instructions. 
And that's all I have for today. I'll be posting more videos in the future about Django, but at this point you should have everything you need to get started. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments or track me down on Twitter. And thanks for watching!